Okay, so I think this is the second part. <laughs> I, uh, I have been uh, so busy and I've had to start and stop so many projects that I don't really know. I know what's wrong with this, but I don't know what exactly I have recorded. And I have misplaced my specs somewhere, so I need to find those. Okay, I can see now. All right, so this is connected to power, and it's on 33, and when I move, strobe comes on, motor doesn't move at all. So what I'm going to do, and the, this is what kind of scares me, the motor moves, I'm not gonna say fine, but it doesn't feel restricted in any way. It just, does, it just doesn't move Gosh, how, how, to, how to describe it? It's not binding, but it's not free moving either. So I, it, to me, it feels kind of how it should feel. Um, I would suspect if the motor was good when I um, move the tone arm, over, tone arm over when it's on and I manually spin it, it would, it would continue spinning and it doesn't do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the got red, white, and blue wires. So yeah, so we have red, blue, white, and then we have a ground. That's a 12 volt. So what, what I'm, here's, well, and, and maybe, maybe I don't need to do that yet. Because when I measure the voltages here, right, so let me put this up on its side. And I don't want that to fall. That's a 12 volt DC motor. And what I noticed before was that when I move the tone arm over when it's on, so right now it's in the 33 position, the light will come on, and I measure voltages on either white, that's, I get no DC, no DC, no DC. So, and I haven't pulled down the schematic yet to see what I should have, but I'm thinking if it's a DC 12 volt motor, motor, I should see some voltage on it, right? So what I was thinking, and what I could do, I guess, um, nine volt battery to test the motor out just to make sure it's spinning. It could be an issue on this board. It could be an issue. I, I did, I, I didn't pull the fuses. I can pull these two fuses see if there's potentially, although they look good, maybe there's an issue with one of those. I haven't cleaned the controls yet, I haven't cleaned the switch yet, but I would think that even if it was a dirty switch, I would see some kind of movement, and I'm not seeing any movement. So, although these look good, and I think I see a filament in there, I'm gonna go ahead and test it. I should get a beep. I'm just going to use my mini grabbers since they're handy. So, that one's good. Try this other one. Oh, look at that. So, this little board had come off its clip. I wonder if someone had... Uh, looked at something on here before. This fuse, I don't see a filament. I think it's in there, I can't really tell. Let's check this one. So that one's good. So both fuses appear good. And I'm really curious about 
I'm really curious about that motor. So let me grab a battery and I'm going to try something. Okay, so I got my 9 volt battery. Now I'm just going to listen for the motor to start up. Motor's not doing anything. Well, the clip fell off, so let's try it again. Nope. I've done that before where I think this motor might be dead. I don't want to touch those together. Oh, motor spinning. I can hear it. All right, so the motor is spinning. So for whatever reason, we're not getting any voltage to the motor. Now, there's a, here's the switch. I don't know what's on this board though. I don't think there's any, it just looks like a, we've got some capacitors and resistors. I don't see like a fuse or anything on that board. So, I think I'm going to have to pull the schematic down and give it a look. But let's just see if getting that motor to move did anything. Again, I, I don't think it's going to do anything because before I was not seeing any voltage on it. Oh, look at that. Oh, maybe, I, maybe I can just pull that motor and service it. I don't know. Let's yank that motor and take it apart. Oops, that's not the right screwdriver. should drop down. These, these are the mounts. I guess I really didn't need to take the bracket screws out. So that'll drop the motor. There's the bracket. Oh, this one has a screw. Oh my gosh, that would be so awesome. Well, the shroud has a screw. So this is the motor shroud here. And I gotta be careful and make sure I get the right screwdriver in here to... Oh my gosh, it's my budget. There we go. You don't want to strip any of these. These screws can be really, really soft in terms of the metal that they use that they use on them. And there's my screwdriver. Okay. So there's the back, and then this should. Push through, I think. There's nothing screwed in up here. Okay, so there's that.
it's probably just stuck in there because there's another rubber piece up on this end but I don't know for sure I don't see anything in there that is connected to anything I don't see anything screwed in anywhere so I think it should just come right out of there there we go all right Okay, so there's the shroud. The shroud was, I can really only go back in there one way. Yeah. Okay. More screws, which are awesome. But this is where it gets a little dicey. Because when we pull that shaft out we have to worry about the wipers that are on either side of that shaft so That screw was stuck to my finger. Leave it there. All right. So I want to mark how this was aligned in here. So black mark on the outside, black mark right there, and then we got a mark. So it's in this general, that general alignment there. Okay, so this spindle should pop right off there. A lot of times it doesn't want to though. So you have to kind of coax it to slide off. Um, that's what I need to do. I need to protect the bottom of this somehow. Uh, shoot. That's not really going to work. Um, I should have popped that off first. Right, so I will also mark that or measure that. Just looking for something to use as a guide. Okay, so it is almost exactly it's about a millimeter taller than the tip of this screwdriver. What I have done in the past is use a couple of spoons. And that doesn't want to budge at all. Oh, crap. Because I've got to get this off. I've got to get this off to service the motor. Maybe I don't. Well, to, to lube it, I do. All right, so here's what, here's what the issue sometimes is. So if you look at this barrel here, you'll see that it's, it's marked. It's, uh, it's got some, some carbon on it. And you want to remove that. And I use... Uh, just some contact cleaner on a cotton swab. And I've done this in I don't know how many other videos. Now when I pop that out of there, you have to be careful, which I really wasn't in this case, because when you pop it out, you don't want to break the, the arms there. And I, I didn't, the arms are intact. So you want to be careful, unlike what I did. Then you just clean this and we'll lube it and then we'll clean that the end cap and we'll lube it there's a little bit of stuff coming off there but it's not super dirty 
Ideally, I'd be able to pull this off. But it doesn't look like it's going to cooperate. And so I'm going to take a little bit of 3-in-1. A couple of drops right here. I'm going to move that back and forth. Well, so far so good. It's moving quite a bit better than it was. And then down here, I'm going to want to take my contact cleaner. And I want to move this between the two. Those two arms right there. Spin it. Again, not a lot of, uh, not a lot of carbons coming off of there. And a couple of drops, and you don't want to touch the arms, a couple of drops of oil down in that little hole. Okay. Just to be safe, let's hit those one more time. And then pop the motor back in. Or reassemble this, I should say. And you want to be careful and slide that between the two. I need to help that out a little bit on the side. Doesn't help when you can't see. So I'm trying to put that between those two, and I may have to do it like this, so I can see what's going on. Come on now. That magnet just sucks it right back up in there. There we go. So now, Now it's moving pretty freely. All right. Okay, so that's lined up where it was. I don't know that it's critical to get this shroud lined up, or this case lined up perfectly where it was. Yeah, that's day and night difference. Much better. Put that over this. Oops. And then
want to make sure I get that that rubber shroud realigned correctly. Oh wait, no, this is the bottom. <laughs> oh goodness. So it went like that. This went on the bottom. So And that was kind of bunched up before, so I don't know that I'm really going to be able to change that. Okay, push that down. All right, that's better than it was. And then this goes back in like so there's only one way that can go back in there still spinning freely So, yeah, that's way better than it was, like day and night difference. So, put this back in here. I flip it over and, yeah, because it was attached from the top. Now that just happened to align itself. I didn't. That was just dumb luck that, that happened. It's not my magnetic screwdriver. Come on. There you go. All right. One, two, okay, what do you suppose is going to happen? I think it's going to spin. I hope I'm right. All right, here we go. Nope. Nope. Dang. Well, looks like we have an electronic issue. But before I, before I Go too much further, let's clean all these controls. Could be a switch, could be a potentiometer. So I'm gonna clean these, I'm gonna clean the switch, I'm gonna clean the pots, and just see if that does anything.
and these pots were really sticky. So I definitely need some of this in there. Sure that didn't do anything but let's see that's gonna be a bummer here goes all right so dirty switch or dirty pots Nice. Who'd have thunk it? Well, not me initially. I don't know what this crap is, but it's uh, kind of nasty. All right, so what I will do next is I'm going to see about lubricating this spindle. In fact, we'll do that now, and then I'll move on to the cosmetic cleanup. Um, this looks like it's kind of a basic, it's got a screw here. What I want to be careful of though is, number one, stripping the screw because I can't get it in there perfectly. I have to use one of my angled screwdrivers here. Um, and then I don't want, I don't know if this has a bearing in it or not, a ball bearing, so I don't want it to come popping out of the bottom. There we go. I do have a smaller screw. Let's use this one. So I'm just holding the spindle or the uh, the platter the shaft so it didn't fall out. Oh yeah, look at that. That's that's this has grease. Lots of grease. And there's a ball bearing in the bottom of this. So this actually has the bearing inside of it. All right, so this is just going to be me with some rubbing alcohol and cotton swabs, making sure this is all clean. And then I'm gonna lubricate that reservoir and do a cosmetic cleanup, and then we'll put the belt back on, the, the platter back on, and give it, a, give it a run, give it a test. All right, there's a lot of stuff in there. A lot of stuff in there. Wow, that's way better than it was. <clears throat> I need to put that little re retaining screw back in there without having it come apart on me. I did notice the stylus is bent on this one, so, and I just got some new aftermarket 
styluses, styli. Boy, that's hard to align with one hand. But they're at the mailbox, so I'm gonna have to run down and get those. Because I don't think, I might have one that I can put on this though. As mentioned in previous videos, I have a whole bunch of cartridges that I'm trying to go through and get rid of, recycle. Yeah, stuff's coming off pretty good. Nice coat of whatever, <laughs> nicotine, dirt, can't really tell. I'll do a, a more thorough cleaning before I wrap the video up, but this is just the initial take the crud off, kind of wipe down. Motor's still spinning, so that's a good sign. Let's see how we're doing on speed. Simulated metal base. You don't say. There is some paint or something there, but yeah, that's, oh, came right off. My goal is always to have whatever I work on leave my shop in much better condition than, than it came in. I know some people don't do that, but you know, I, I know personally when I take my vehicle in for service, I like it when the dealership, I, I use a dealership for one vehicle because it's still newer and I was dumb enough to buy an extended warranty, which I never, ever, ever typically do except this one time. So I take it back to the dealer and they always wash it. So it's it's always, I, I, I like that because I'm horrible about washing my car. All right, let's do a speed a speed check. So I'm going to put the belt that it came with back on it and we'll see if we can get the speed dialed in using the pitch control pots. All right. Okay. The moment of truth. All right. So that's good. And I checked that tone arm elevator before. So let's see, I'm gonna turn the lights down. You won't be able to see the strobe. Um, so that's on 33. And it's locked on right there. Locked on at 33, almost right in the middle of the, the potentiometer's range. Really close. So let's look at 45. And 45 is about the same. Maybe. Yeah, 45 is almost right in the middle as well. Nice. And I think this is an auto return. I don't remember. Let's see. Yeah, auto return. So awesome sauce. Yeah, that stylus has seen better days. I don't have I don't have a replacement for this in stock, so it's just an Audio Technica. I'll replace it with another Audio Technica. Or I have some other ones. Maybe I'll put a different one on here. I don't know. So anyway, let me uh, let me dig around my my cartridge cache and see if I can find something to put on here.
in place of that Audio Technica. Right, so you know I often get questions like, uh, what cartridge is on that, or what cartridge did you put on that, and you know I, I don't really pay any attention. Um, I don't know that I should or that I need to, but um, just for the heck of it, I think I'm going to put on an Audio Technica. I think I bought the stylus for the ATS-12E, I think, or ATS-13, AT-13EA. Putting an AT thirteen EA on there. Oh no 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 no! I'm not I'm not putting that on. I am putting on. I'm putting on. I ordered these a while ago, and I just I don't remember what I what the hell I ordered. I think it is this TC three thousand. I don't know, you know, I order these off of eBay and it's like, oh, this fits that whatever model. And it's like, uh, I don't know what, the, I, this isn't what I ordered. I didn't order this. This, that does not look anything like, oh, oh. That's for... That's for a different one. So these are for some um, P-mount cartridges. I thought these were for I thought these were for my standard mount cartridges. So I may not have a stylus to put on here. I may have to order one. I need to do some more digging. Okay, so I figured out what happened. I ordered two sets of um, styli. So one set for the P-mount uh, for P-mount cartridges, and the other set for a standard uh, one and a half inch. So I do have, I do have a stylus if I wanted to use one of these P-mounts on an adapter. I may do that because I have it here, and I can wrap this repair up. Um, I'm just looking to see what else I have in terms of P-mounts. Yeah, so I think that would fit on this SS221U. That looks like the same. Yeah, that's the same cartridge. Or the same, yeah, same stylus. So I think what I will do instead is I'm going to use one of these on an Audio Technica mount and pop that on it. Oops. All right, so I'm going to mount this on the head shell and then we will give it a listen and see how it sounds. Okay, new cartridge is installed. So let's give this a whirl. And there it's up to speed. Damping is good. We have sound. No hum. Ooh, that sounds good. It's very clear. Can't play too much though. Heaven forbid. All right, so I think other than a little bit of, you know, cosmetic cleanup remaining, uh, the Techniques SL23 is done. So what I'll do though, before I wrap up the videos, I'm going to take the dust cover. And we'll do the kind of traditional, here's the before, not in horrible shape, does need to be cleaned up a little bit. So I'll clean this up, buff it out, 
and uh, I'll come back when I'm done. I'm going to listen to this uh, record for a little bit. All right, dust cover's been polished. Again, it wasn't in bad shape to begin with, but um, got a, a, a few of the kind of minor scratches out, some of the finer scratches. So, um, yeah, the Techniques SL23 is done. So as always, if you like what you see, hit like, hit subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video.